Are these the perfect boots for riding platform pedals? Yeah, pretty much, and I'll tell you why. While I still ride clipless pedals on my road bike, I don't use them on my mountain and gravel bikes. I did at one time, but I decided I didn't like them. So for mountain biking and gravel riding, I'm platform all the way. A couple of my bikes have convertible pedals with platforms on one side and clipless on the other. These are especially handy for touring and on my recumbent. Lots of riders ride clipless, but there's been a trend towards platforms. Unlike clipless set setups that require shoes to which cleats can be mounted, platforms allow the use of any shoe. Technically, you could ride platforms barefoot, but that seems like a terrible idea. And let me interject something here. The fact that I use the term clipless reveals my background as a roadie. Roadies say clipless, BMXers say clip or clip-in pedals, Mountain bikers can use either term, but tend toward the BMX nomenclature. The history of this will be the topic of another video. For now, let's get back to the subject at hand. While platform pedals allow the use of nearly any footwear, riders still gravitate towards brands closely associated with cycling. Bontrager, Garneau, and Shimano are among the brands that make platform-specific shoes. Merrill and Adidas are among the shoe brands offering bike shoes for platform pedals. 510 is another popular brand. With these brands, many shoe models made for platforms will also accept cleats. Those are all good shoes and boots, but riders shouldn't restrict themselves to footwear made specifically for biking. Other shoes and boots work just as well, and in some cases, better. Take my favorite brand as an example. I've been wearing only Pro Pay products for years. Dress shoes and casual shoes, water shoes, winter boots, hiking boots, and I've been using only their hiking boots on my platform pedals for all that time. One consideration in shoe selection is the stiffness of the sole. Bike specific shoes are touted as having stiffer soles, but I've never found my Pro Pay products to be overly flexy. Another consideration is pricing. Pro Pay started out very economically priced, but as their catalog expanded and their market share grew, their prices edged up. Bike specific shoes started out quite high priced but edged back. The result is that ProPay and other brands are similarly priced, more or less. You can still find $400 bike shoes. There are no $400 ProPay shoes. Why do I ride the combination of platforms and ProPay? Here are the top three reasons. One, I'm typically on and off the bike dozens of times during a ride. Mostly I set up cameras because I'm nearly always shooting video, but I also take nature breaks fairly often. Two, I prefer the handling offered by platforms. Platforms and clipless offer different handling characteristics and both have advantages and disadvantages. I happen to prefer the handling characteristics of platforms. I move around a lot on the bike, including moving my feet on the pedals. I move my feet back for power sections and forward for high cadence stretches. I tripod corners from time to time. Platforms just work well for me. Three, fit. I have mutant wide feet. I wear an 11H. H is what they put you in after you've blown through all the E's. Almost no one makes an H width boot. My Red Wing work boots are the only H width footwear I own. But Propay 5E width, also called extra wide, works fine once I get them broken in. It should be noted that not all Propay 5E models fit the same and I've had to return some, but that's true with other shoe manufacturers as well. Years ago, I could wear New Balance extra wide running shoes, but only those built on their SL2 last. Those on the SL1 last, which they also called extra wide, were too narrow. Some bike specific footwear manufacturers claim to have wide models. True, these shoes are wider than their standard shoes, but they fall far, far short of a truly wide shoe. I've tried everything from CD to Lake to Shimano, and none was even close. I've used custom made shoes before, but they run $1,000 to $1,500 a pair, and the last pair I got never did fit right. You may not have mutant wide feet, but whatever width you wear, you're more likely to find the right size in the Pro Pay catalog than in the limited off-the-rack choices available in most bike shops. And here's a quick tip. Use a shoehorn when putting on shoes and boots to reduce wear on the boot shaft and heel cup. Footwear lasts years longer if you do this. These new Propay Ridge Walker boots replace this pair of Propay Camp Walkers I bought more than four years ago. Four years is a long time given the heavy use my footwear gets from hiking and mountain biking. So there you have it. 
If you've been looking for the perfect footwear to use with platform pedals, ProPay may well be the right choice. I'll put a link to the ProPay page on Amazon in the description below. It's an affiliate link, so if you use it and buy something, I'm supposed to get a small commission. Your price is the same as if you didn't use it. And I say supposed to because although I've used my affiliate links before, I've never had a commission. Say la vie. Click like if you got value from this video, subscribe if you've not already done so, and click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Please share this video with others you think might be interested. I'm Rich Reese, and I'll see you out there.